Hi everyone, welcome back to Live Darts. We are here at the Red Dragon Champion of Champions and we've got none other than cool hand Luke Humphreys. Luke, this must be a bit out of your comfort zone, isn't it? Best of three? Yeah, it is a little bit, you know, best of three is, as I'd say, anybody's game, but it's it's a it's just one of them events that, you know, is a bit of fun to play in and um, takes all the stress away from the normal sort of darts I play and, and I'm, I'm here to enjoy it really, yeah. Just keep you sharp as well, knowing that you've got to be focused from minute one. I mean, yeah, it's, it's one of them things that can help you with the sort of the nerves and stuff because you're always under under that bit of pressure because I mean, one bad leg and it, it could cost you. So yeah, it's one of it's one of them, it's one of them competitions where it could five six games if you carry on keep winning, it could put you under that little bit of pressure that could help in the in the PDC when I do play in these games at five all, you know, which I've been struggling with. So yeah, it, it's a good concept and it might help me. Gives you a taste of what the news of the world would have been like back in the day as well that everyone all the old pros keep going on about. Yeah, I mean, it's one of them competitions I'd love to have played in, actually, you know, as I've heard a lot of good things about it. And I know a few people that um, have won it, so it would have been... It's a shame it's not around nowadays, you know. But um, it's one of them competitions I'd love to have played in, but this is as this is close as it's going to get, and yeah, that's why I'm here. It's nice to see you smiling again. It's been a very difficult year for yourself. How are you in yourself now? Yeah, it, it has been difficult, you know, I ain't going to lie. It is, it's not been... Uh, uh, a, an easy year for me. I've, I've been struggling not just not just darts, but in personal uh, circumstances, you know. But um, I've seeked the help I needed, and I feel happier myself. You know, I feel relaxed. I don't feel pressure anymore. You know, because it's just a, about what I've received, the help I've received, and I feel much more relaxed about everything. I'm here for a good time. Whereas six months ago, a year ago, I'd have been here, sort of a little bit more stressed and panicked. But um, if, if there's anybody out there you know that goes has gone through what I've gone through, you know, it's the best thing to do is to seek help because it really has helped me as a person, you know. So yeah. For yeah. the moment you spoke out, the way the darting world rallied around you and helped you out, you must be over the moon with that, and to know that you've got so many good friends within the industry as well. I mean, yeah, I had a lot of I won't go into names, but I had a lot of professionals come up to me and say, you know, they've been through the same thing, and uh, and it just makes you realise you know you're not alone because I, I felt lonely. I thought, you know what I mean, I'm the only person that's going through this and, and no one else is struggling. And, and that was why I put my point out to maybe give the game up because I thought I can't carry on going through this. I'm the only person, so I might as well just give it up. But I've experienced a few people say to me, you know, we've struggled as well. And it does happen. It's not just in darts, it happens in general life. Um, and yeah, it's, they have rallied around me and a lot of them have been really good towards me. And um, I very much appreciate it, and it's definitely helped me along the way, yeah. You were one of the first to ever speak out in this environment as well. Do you hope you set the trend now for other players, not just young, but old as well, the ones that keep things to themselves and bottle up? Look, there are people out there that are willing to help, and there are things that can be done for you. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I'm not necessarily talking about setting a trend, you know, I don't want lots of people to come out about it all of a sudden and just start saying, I struggle, I struggle, and you know, everyone who struggles. But I had the real. The bad struggle, you know, the one where I was literally depressed and stuff and really, really sort of got to me. Um, but I would say if people do struggle, the best thing to do is to come out about it and, and just be honest because, you know, people are not going to, it's not like the olden days, 20, 30 years ago, you know, people would look down on you if you had anxiety or, or panic disorder or depression. These days, you know, everybody mucks together and helps each other out and if, if any if I could say anything you know if you struggle like I have the best thing to do is to come out and be honest about it and just uh, there's a lot of people that have gone through it trust me people don't understand the amount of people that have gone through it and it, and for me I think it's the best thing I ever did in my career. I'm going to take you back to the Rob Cross game because this it intrigues me not in a bad way but you said that was the lowest point in your career for what you were going through yet arguably the highest point in your career as well. Have you had time to take that in and go through what you went through in that couple of hours? Yeah, I mean, it, it was the greatest, not just winning the game, it was, the, the, for me, the greatest achievement of my life was carrying on that game. Because, obviously, I ain't gonna publicize it when I was playing, you know, because you, you don't want you don't want to show weakness. But, um, yeah, when I come off of that, I said to the, I've said in an interview with the PDC, uh, when I come off that tour, you know, I, I thought my heart had stopped. I thought you know, something bad was gonna happen. And I, I said to one of the security, I don't think I can go back on the stage. I can't. And then they said, well, you want, you know, you've got 30 seconds. And I just made that plunge to, to get up there and, and carry on. And what I achieved after going through what I did in that little bit, to me, was the greatest achievement of my life. Not, not winning that game was to get back up on that stage when I felt defeat inside of me. You know, I felt like I couldn't get back up there. And I did. And to me, I would say that's the greatest achievement so far. As well, we haven't really spoke since your Premier League debut shall we say, where the exit you were sensational. Does that just show how good your stage game can be and what you want more in your career of? Yeah, I mean, it just shows how good I am, actually, not just on the stage, 
the, the, it's the flaw that really sort of kills me a little bit, you know, I do struggle with the, the consistency, but I have said before, it's one of the things you're going to have to learn and start getting better at, and, and I will. But my stage game's there, you know, and, and I'm going to have to up that floor game to start getting on the stage a lot more. But I think if I can get up on that stage, you know, I can really start taking the big names out like I did in the Worlds. And I want to carry on, you know, this, this end of the year, I want to qualify for the last, I mean, Players' Championship Worlds and, and, and get my name out there and put myself forward to that Premier League again, you know, because I enjoyed it so much, you know. Um, and, and Barry's already come out and said about, you know, there quite possibly is going to be another contender. And I think I put my name forward in what I did last this year, you know, I, I was the best performer average-wise and, and I got the draw, so if I can have a good end to the year, who's to say they won't pick me again, you know, and I'll prove to, uh, prove to everyone that um, I, can, I can play some good darts on that stage. It's got two points off you, what you said there. First of all, you may be a little bit disappointed not to get a World Series event off the back of what you did in the World and the Premier League, being that Barry did mention, mm. obviously, you and Dimmy in particular for the World Series. I know it's not the be on end all, but were you a little bit disappointed not to get a shout? Uh, I was a little bit, but I think I see something that Barry said on Twitter actually said, you know, the reason that they didn't get picked was because of them getting their chance in the Premier League. If, it, if they, if we say the contenders didn't happen, I think that we would have probably have been picked. But because we got that opportunity, um, we, we were both grateful for, then that's why we didn't get picked for the World Series. But yeah, I was a little bit gutted about it because I thought there was a good chance for me, you know, because I played well in the Worlds, played well in the Premier League to maybe even do what Nathan did, you know, go there and win one, because that's how I felt on the stage, and I felt like I could win. So it was a little bit gutting, but, you know, it's, it's, it's just, I'm just starting my journey, you know, I can't expect everything too soon. And I, I know that World Series invites around the corner, i just got to keep proving myself, and that's the key. The other point, what you said there about stage form and floor form, I'm going to use you and Demi, because your journeys are quite similar, where yeah, you yeah. both come alive on the stage, but you both openly admit that your floor form needs to improve. Is that something that we're seeing in the modern game with you youngsters coming through that the adrenaline on the stage gets you to such a level that the floor just can't seem to get you to? I do, I think it's, the, um, if I could point out myself what's the best about me is that the one game a day, you know, I prepare well for that first game and if you see on the floor, they always seem to start off really well. It's the next couple of games that seem to sort of not, not set the standard as they've started off. So yeah, I think it's more about stamina and fatigue. I think is the is the best thing I need to start progressing with because if it, if it wasn't for you know, I mean the first round games and second round games and winning them more, I would get to them quarterfinals, semifinals, and maybe finals and win them in the Pro Tour. So yeah, it's a, it's it's just hard it's hard to explain actually. You know, it's, I mean Dimitri's the same. He, I mean he has had a good results this year. He's had a couple of finals only on the Pro Tour, so he has proved he can do it. I've had a semi-final, quarter-final, but I, I want better, you know. I think I'm capable of winning Pro Tours, so it's definitely, maybe not this year, I'll settle for the World Championships and maybe the Players' Championships this year, but next year I'm really going to be trying hard to start getting these Pro Tour performances going and start winning and stuff like that, yeah. And the Euro Tour as well, I'm guessing, as well, because that also gives you big stage experience as well. Yeah, they're vital. They're vital for all the qualifications, you know. I mean, people don't understand how tough they are to qualify for in, in itself. Um, you know, you have to beat some very good players to qualify, and and once you get there, you want to take a full advantage of getting there. You know, um, but when I get up there, you know, I mean, the last Euro six, seven Euro tours, I've won my first round game every time. I just haven't won that second round game, and there's been a lot of instances where I should have won. So it will come. You know, you just can't get too disheartened, and you got to keep going. And I, I know it's only around the corner before I start really sort of picking up with all the best players in the world, really. Luke, it's an absolute pleasure. It's great to see you smiling and enjoying the sport again, and thanks for taking time with us as always, thanks, mate. mate. Pleasure. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers.